Hello everyone, Ray Del Vecchio here. Um, today I want to I want to really go back to basics and just explain how WordPress works, because a lot of people I'm sure start you know playing with it, trying to figure out how to build a website with WordPress, but maybe you don't understand the big picture of what's going on, how the files are put together, and just the general structure of how it's it's installed. So I want to I want to give you a broad overview of what WordPress is and how it works. So let's get started. Um, first off, I've explained this I believe in a few other videos, but with WordPress you have two choices: WordPress.com or WordPress.org. Today I'm going to talk only about WordPress.org, which is self-hosted WordPress, meaning that you install WordPress on your own web server. So I'm not going to talk about WordPress.com at all. I'm just going to talk about WordPress.org, and that's where I am right now on this website page, WordPress.org. And you'll see uh, it gives you a brief explanation of what it is, but really WordPress is a content management system that is used for websites. So if you have a website that has a lot of content, which most websites do, um, w WordPress is a way to organize that content into blog posts, articles, pages, and organize your media as well when you upload files, photos, and stuff like that. It's free and open source, and what that means is you can install WordPress for free. You can do everything for free, but the learning curve to learn WordPress is a little bit steeper than some other um, website building software because of how powerful it is. But the beauty of it, because it's open source, that means that all the code that is used to make up WordPress is available to the public. So a lot of really smart website developers and software people can analyze the code, test it, try and hack it, and in turn actually make it more secure when they update it. WordPress to me is the number one software that you want to use to set up a website. I mean, I think every website should be set up with WordPress on your own web hosting server because that's the most flexible way that you can set up a website. And I'm going to click on the download button right here. And you see it takes us to a download page. And there's the actual download button right here. You can see that it's a zip file, it's a .zip file, and it's only 7 megabytes. So it's not that big of a file, and in the grand scheme of things, it's really not that much code or that elaborate, but it is really well done. So in lieu of downloading the zip, the easiest way to install WordPress is through your web host. Now, I use HostGator, and I'm going to include a link to HostGator right here. And with HostGator, you can one click install WordPress using a service called quick install and that's the way that I set up every WordPress website you define your WordPress login information your username and your password and you define where you want the WordPress installation to install whether it's right on the domain or within a subdirectory and that's it when you're at that point it's really time to start building the website but before we do that, I, I really want to take you through the actual theme structure and the file structure of WordPress. And WordPress in itself, it really consists of files, directories, and a database. You have to create the database on your web server, and all of your content is stored in the database. So any blog post that you do, anything like that is going to be stored within the database. And all the files that make up your design and the template files are simply stored on your web server. So let me open up my FTP program of choice, which is FileZilla. And that's going to show us our web server. And you can see from that what the WordPress installation looks like on the web server. So right now I have this connected to a test installation of WordPress. And most times you're going to... Uh, get to your web server uh, website files at a folder named www or public underscore dot html and that is all going to depend on your website host but you can see all these are the wordpress files that install with wordpress so we have, the, we have three main directories there's wp-admin and these are all the files that make up the administrative area of wordpress where you control your website there's wp content and this is where your themes go plugins uploads and other stuff 
and the WP includes, which is part of this core software that you really don't want to mess with. And then we have a bunch of different PHP files. So really that's all there is to WordPress. Every time you install WordPress, you're going to have the same type of installation. And you'll see if I go into the WP content just to show you where themes and plugins are installed, you could see that there's um, subdirectories for each. And there you go. Now that's loaded, you can see we have a plugins directory, a themes directory, an upgrade directory, and an uploads directory. So anytime you download a theme or a plugin, this is where they get installed. And anytime you upload an image, it goes to this folder and it's automatically organized by year and month. So that is how the files are taken care of on WordPress. Now if we go into the themes, that's going to show us the different themes that we have installed. And right now you'll see I have a handful of themes. All these are the default WordPress themes, 2015, 2014, 2016. And I have a child theme of 2016 called 2016 Business. And if we go into WordPress, we can activate these different themes. And each theme is going to give us a different design. And that is kind of the nice part about WordPress, that you can easily change your design by installing a different theme. And there's free themes. There's also paid premium themes. I specifically use a paid premium theme. I'm going to mention it at the end of the video, but I believe that if you're building a, a really professional website, a business website, or a website for a client, you don't want to use a free theme. You want to use a paid theme. But to learn WordPress, I highly, highly recommend that you do use a free theme to start with. Now, I don't want to go into too many details here, but if, if we go back into the theme folder, you'll see that we have these different files here different PHP files with different names. So comments, footer, archive, 404, functions.php, header, image. We have a lot of different PHP files here. What these files are, they're actually template files. So these are the files that are going to build your website design for every page on your website. And the way that they're loaded is by a template hierarchy. So let me pull up an image here. I actually have this opened and and here's the layout. It, it is a little bit difficult to interpret at first, but if you just take one example, say um, a, an individual page on your website, you would go through this chart. So it's not a 404 page. It's not a search result page. It's not an archive page. It's a singular page. So right here, is it a single post page or is it a, is it a static page? We have a static page. So if we follow this all the way along, you'll see that the PHP file that builds a static page is page.php. And you can also have custom IDs for certain pages using these other custom formats. But the, on the right-hand side are all the PHP files in the theme system. And on the left-hand side is what page are you loading? As you can see here, there's blog, there's comment page. The archive pages are all your blog archives, so it could be archived by category, by tag, by author, or by date. So it takes a little bit of time to really understand this and work with it when you start customizing, but this is, a, this is an image that I've saved and that I use from time to time to understand how the template hierarchy works if I need to customize a specific page or a specific area on my WordPress website. And the other nice thing about WordPress is plugins. There's all of these various plugins that you can add to your website that give you different functionality like uh, you know, common plugins are SEO plugins for search engine optimization to get your site ranked higher on Google. There's uh, contact form plugins. There's plugins to automatically back up your site so you don't have to worry if something should happen to the files. You'll always have a backup. And there's, you know, thousands of others that you can choose from and just like themes there's free plugins and there's paid plugins and I use both on my client websites and as I showed you before the plugins you can install them either from the WordPress uh, administration area by logging into your WordPress website or the file directory where the plugins are located is the WP content folder so let me go back to that folder And here is the plugins folder 
within the WP content folder. If I go back one level, you'll see WP content and the plugins folder. You'll see that there's no plugins installed currently on this WordPress installation. But just like the themes, each plugin has its own directory. So that's a basic overview of how WordPress works with the files on your web server and the content which is stored within a database on your web server. So that's the basic introduction to WordPress. I mean, there's so much more that, that we could talk about, but I don't, I don't want to go into specific details of how WordPress works. I just wanted to give you the big picture overview. And to finish things off here, I want to show you a few examples of WordPress websites that I have a few open right now. So um, the first one is a big company, and a lot of big companies use WordPress, and this is the Walt Disney Company. So I'm sure they have the money to, to custom design a theme specific to their brand. And that's, um, that's exactly what they did here. They have a really modular design, and the bulk of the design is high quality pictures more than anything so that's that's really what makes up this website and if we go to a different page here let's see if they have a similar layout and yeah it looks like they use pretty much the same the same layout on these inner pages but they just have a, not, a lot of like slick features and the really high quality photos that make the design so on the other end of the spectrum, I'm going to show you a website for a fence and deck company in Dallas. And believe it or not, this is WordPress. <laughs> so this, this shows you the variation between a really professional uh, you know, WordPress website that was professionally designed versus somebody that probably picked out a free theme and didn't do that much in terms of customizing or designing. Now, you know, the truth of the matter is a lot of local businesses don't have really great designs. Sometimes all they need is a website with information on it, and as long as they have enough information and have enough pictures, the design itself doesn't even matter. But, um, you know, if I, if I had to guess when this design was created, I would assume it's from the 90s or, you know, 10 years ago, when in reality this is a WordPress theme, so it's got to be relatively recent. And the third example I want to show you is my website. So this is um, WebsiteProfitCourse.com. And you'll see on this is the front page of my website. And I use a premium WordPress theme. And this is heavily customized to my liking. I, I took a lot of time to design it this way. And you'll see if I, if I go to one of the inner pages, that has a different layout, a completely different layout. So... You'll see I, I kind of use the same type of uh, structure where I don't do anything too fancy with the design. I just want to make sure that there's good pictures and that it's a very clean layout. And you'll see here I have a picture of my book, which is available on Amazon, Create Your Freedom, uh, Become a Local Web Design Guru and Make Money from Home. So a little pitch there. <laughs> but uh, but I'll also show you the, the company that I use for premium themes is iThemes. I subscribe to their uh, builder developer pack which gives me access to all of, their th all of their themes. I think it's 90 child themes so every one of these themes I have access to and I have one open here um, an example of one of them which is the summit theme and you can see this is really not that different from the D Disney design. I mean this is not that far off from the Disney design that's what I like about iThemes. They give you a great base to start with. And instead of buying one theme at a time, you get access to, like I said, 90 of them. But you're using the same framework. So the settings and all that is, is really similar from website to website, even though the designs might be different. Um, so, yeah, let me, let's take a look. Scroll down and take a look at this website. And you can see all the different styles that are in place. Let me click through to a couple different pages here. I'll go to the blog page. And you can see this is a little bit different layout, and they have a, the posts right here. If I go through to a post, this is the full post um, style. 
and they have a lot of just different styles and colors already built in. So when it comes to building a client website, you're, you're almost 80% of the way done when you install this theme. I'm going to check out a couple more layouts here. You see they have the layouts button and they show you how you can lay the website out differently using this theme. So I'm going to do the image header and see if that's any different. And what you'll see is the image header is actually up at the top here as opposed to um, you know, halfway through the page. They have a little email sign up box style right there. And then let me go to the HTML block. And this is another cool feature of iThemes Builder that I love. They give you sections where if you want a custom code, HTML or PHP, they'll let you do that. So you can get the exact website that you want with the exact customizations and styles that you want using iThemes Builder. Let me check out a few more. We'll do a left sidebar layout. You can see how that looks. So all of these are automatically built into the theme. And if I go if I go back here um, and click the buy button you'll notice that it costs eighty dollars to get the individual theme or for less than double that which is 150 bucks you get access to all 90 builder themes so you're starting instead of starting from scratch or start with a free theme that you don't know how good it is you get access to a premium set of themes that makes it super simple to build your website layout and customize your websites and also manage multiple client websites. I mean, that's really what I think iThemes is, is great for. If you're going to manage other people's websites and you want to make money, iThemes has you know a suite of tools that is integrated really nicely and makes it easy to manage multiple websites. So I'm going to include a link on this video to iThemes, but if you enjoyed this video and if it taught you something, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I do more videos on WordPress, web design, and building client websites.